Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Doctrine and Covenants of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Even though this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort has been made to be as doctrinally and historically accurate as possible. Every day a new section of the Doctrine and Covenants will be released. I hope that you'll visit this often and be able to share this uh, with your friends. Thank you. Hi, and welcome back to the Doctrine and Covenants podcast. This is going to be for section 11. Section 11. All right, uh, let me read the heading first. Revelation given through the prophet Joseph Smith to his brother Hiram Smith at Harmony, Pennsylvania, May 1829. This revelation was received through the Urim and Thummim in answer to Joseph's supplication and inquiry. Joseph Smith's history suggests that this revelation was received after the restoration of the Aaronic priesthood. So let me just read you a little background about this to kind of clarify and put in perspective what uh, we're reading and when. Since Hiram's visit followed <clears throat> the return of his younger brother Samuel to Manchester, New York, Section 11 must have been received at least several days after Samuel's baptism in Harmony on the 25th. This estimate allows time for Samuel's return to New York and Hiram's subsequent journey to Harmony. This revelation to Hiram should therefore be dated to the last few days in May 1829. It is further apparent that Doctrine and Covenants section 13, which describes the restoration of the Aaronic Priesthood on the 15th of May, should logically precede section 11. Since Oliver exercised his Aaronic Priesthood to baptize Samuel on 25th of May, several days after section 11 was received, Following the baptism of Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery on the 15th of May, 1829, the prophet reported, Our minds being now enlightened, we began to have the scriptures laid open to our understandings and the true meaning and intention of their more mysterious passages revealed unto us in a manner which we never could attain to previously, nor ever before had thought of. In the meantime, we were forced to keep secret the uh, circumstances of having received the priesthood and are having been baptized, owing to a spirit of uh, persecution which had already manifested itself in the neighborhood. After a few days, however, feeling it to be our duty, we commenced uh, to reason out of the scriptures with our acquaintances and friends as we happened to meet with them. About this time, my brother Samuel H. Smith came to visit us. Not many days afterwards, my brother Hiram Smith came to us to inquire concerning these things. When at his earnest request, I inquired of the Lord through the Urim and Thummim and received for him the following. All right, verse 1. A great and marvelous work is about to come forth among the children of men. Behold, I am God. Give heed to my word, which is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, to the dividing asunder of both joints and marrow. Therefore, give heed unto my word. Behold, the, the field is white, all ready to harvest. Therefore, whoso desireth to reap, let him thrust in his sickle with his might, and reap while the day lasts, that he may, be, he may treasure up for his soul everlasting salvation in the kingdom of God. Yea, whosoever will thrust in his sickle and reap, the same is called of God. Therefore, if you will ask of me, you shall receive. If you will knock, it shall be opened unto you. Now, as you have asked, behold, I say unto you, keep my commandments, and seek to bring forth and establish the cause of Zion. Seek not for riches but for wisdom and behold the mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto you and then shall you be made rich behold he that hath eternal life is rich verily verily I say unto you even as you desire of me so it shall be done unto you and if you desire you shall be the means of doing much good in this generation say nothing but repentance unto this generation keep my commandments and assist to bring forth my work according to my commandments and you shall be blessed behold thou hast a gift the gift of the Holy Ghost, it was actually received on the 6th of April, 1830, on the day the church was organized. Or thou shalt have a gift, if thou wilt desire of me in faith, with an honest heart, believing in the power of Jesus Christ, or in my power, which speaketh unto thee. For behold, it is I that speak. Behold, I am the light which shineth in darkness, and by my power I give these words unto thee. And now verily, verily, I say unto thee, put your trust in that spirit which leadeth to do good, yea, to do justly, and to walk humbly, to judge righteously, and this is my spirit. Lorenzo Snow said, there is a way by which persons can keep their consciences clear before God and man, and that is to preserve within them the spirit of God, which is the spirit of revelation to every man and woman. It will reveal to them, even in the simplest of matters, what they shall do by making suggestions to them. We should try to learn the nature of this spirit that we may understand its suggestions, and then we will always be able to do right. 
This is the grand privilege of every Latter-day Saint. We know that it is our right to have the manifestations of the Spirit every day of our lives. The Spirit is in every man and every woman so that they need not walk in the darkness at all. And it is not always necessary for them to come to the president of the church or to the twelve or to the elders of Israel to get counsel. They have it within them. There is a friend that knows just exactly what to say to them. From the time we receive the gospel, go down into the waters of baptism and have hands laid upon us afterwards for the gift of the Holy Ghost. We have a friend. If we do not drive it from us by doing wrong, that friend is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, which partakes of the things of God and shows them unto us. This is a grand means that the Lord has provided for us, that we may know the light and not be groveling continually in the dark. Verse 13, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I will impart unto you of my spirit which shall in, that will enlighten your mind, which shall fill your soul with joy. And then shall ye know, or by this shall you know, all things whatsoever you desire of me, which are pertaining unto things of righteousness, in faith believing in me that you shall receive. When inspiration conveys something out of harmony with the accepted revelations of the church or contrary to the decisions of its constituted authorities, Latter-day Saints may know that it is not of God, no matter how plausible it may appear. Anything at discord with that which comes from God through the head of the church is not to be received as authoritative or reliable. Uh, verse 15, Behold, I command you that you need not suppose that you are called to preach until you are called. How do we prepare for a mission? Uh, in section 11, the Lord teaches Hiram uh, several steps to be followed in preparing for a mission. Desire to serve live worthily to receive the Spirit of the Lord so it can enlighten your mind which shall fill your soul with joy. Keep the commandments of the Lord, assisting in the work of the Lord in any way that uh, you might be asked. Seek to obtain the Word of the Lord through, uh, through studying the Word of the Lord that had already gone forth, the Bible, and studying the Word of the Lord that was then being translated, the Book of Mormon. Build upon the gospel, denying not either the spirit of revelation nor the spirit of prophecy. The Lord indicates further that these suggestions are for all who have good desires to serve. And that was by Brother Ludlow. Verse 16, wait a little longer until you shall have my word, my rock, my church, and my gospel, that you may know of a surety my doctrine. And then, behold, according to your desires, yea, even according to your faith, shall it be done unto you. Keep my commandments, hold your peace until uh, appeal unto my spirit. Yea, cleave unto me with all your heart, that you may assist in bringing to light those things of which has been spoken. Yea, the translation of my work, be patient until you shall accomplish it. Behold, this is your work, to keep my commandments, yea, with all your might, mind, and strength. Seek not to declare my word, but first seek to obtain my word, and then shall your tongue be loosed. Then, if you desire, you shall have my spirit and my word, yea, the power of God unto the convincing of men. But now hold your peace, study my word, which hath gone forth among the children of men, the Bible, and also study my word, which shall come forth among the children of men, meaning the Book of Mormon, or that which is now translating, yea, until you have obtained all, which I shall grant unto you, the children of men in this generation, and then shall all things be added thereto. Brother Bruce R. McConkie said, Those who preach by the power of the Holy Ghost use the Scriptures as their basic source of knowledge and doctrine. They begin with what the Lord has before revealed to other inspired men, but it is the practice of the Lord to give added knowledge to those upon whose hearts the true meanings and intents of the Scriptures have been impressed. Many great doctrinal revelations come to those who preach from the Scriptures. When they are in tune with the infinite, the Lord lets them know, first, the full and complete meaning of the Scriptures they are expounding, and then he oft times expands their views so that new truths flood in upon them, and they learn added things that that those who do not follow such a course can never know. Hence, as to preaching the word, the Lord commands his servants to go forth saying none other things than that which the prophets and apostles have written, and that which is taught them by the Comforter through the prayer of faith. In a living, growing divine church, new truths come uh, will come from time to time, and add truths will be and, and old truths will be applied with new vigor to new situations, all under the guidance of the Holy Spirit of God. Verse 22, Behold, or 23, Behold, thou art Hiram, my son. Seek the kingdom of God, and all things shall be added according to that which is just. Build upon my rock, which is my gospel. Deny not the spirit of revelation, nor the spirit of prophecy, for woe unto him that denieth these things. <clears throat> Joseph Fielding Smith said, 
He, meaning Hiram, was not to deny the spirit of revelation. This is good counsel for all of us today. There are some members of the church who seemingly complain because the Lord is not giving revelations to be placed in the Doctrine and Covenants as in the beginning, and they ask why revelation has ceased in the church. Usually it is the case that these critics are not faithfully keeping the commandments the Lord has already given, and their eyes are blind to the fact that revelation and the guidance of the Lord is being meted out to the church constantly. No one with the spirit of discernment can fail to see that the head or that the hand of the Lord has guided this people from the beginning, and this guidance is manifest today as in other times to all who are humble and have a contrite spirit. The great commandment to us all is to seek first the kingdom of God. If we would, if we would pay heed to the commandment, there could come peace to the church today as it came to Enoch and his city. If we are not seeking his kingdom first of all, then we are worthy of condemnation and retarding our progress toward the kingdom of God. Verse 26, Therefore treasure up in your heart until the time which is in my wisdom that you shall go forth. Behold, I speak unto all who have good desires and have thrust in their sickle to reap. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I am the life and the light of the world. I am the same who came unto mine own, and mine own received me not. But verily, verily, I say unto you that as many as received me, to them will I give power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on my name. Amen. I bear testimony that these things are true, that as we uh, seek to do the Lord's will, that he will qualify us to whatever callings we might have, and that uh, we can be prepared to serve uh, in very marvelous ways. I bear that testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. See you next time. Bye.